welcome to Thumb Wins End of the Road in Michigan podcast. We select one of our amazing stories about the Great Lakes region and the tip of Michigan's thumb and create a little podcast. These are taken from thumbwind.com and presented here so you can listen to them anytime and anywhere. Michigan has a fascinating history and the thumb region has an amazing background and some of the tallest tales in the state. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's tale from the end of the road. Today's story, George Walton Jenks, a remarkable Civil War hero and entrepreneur in Michigan's thumb. In the late 1800s, a man named George W. Jenks made his mark on the history of Michigan's thumb region. Born on May 9, 1838, in Crown Point, New York, George's journey led him to become a prominent figure in Sand Beach, Michigan. This article explores the remarkable life of George W. Jenks, a man of many talents and unwavering dedication. The Jenks Family's Early Years and Relocation George was the son of Jeremiah and Relief Jenks, and his family embarked on a life-changing journey in 1854 when they left the Empire State for Michigan. After a brief stay in St. Clair, they settled in Lexington, Sanilla County. It was here that young George began his journey into the world of commerce. Jenks enlists during the Civil War. As the nation plunged into the turmoil of the Civil War, George W. Jenks felt the call to serve his country. In October 1861, at the age of 23, he enlisted as a private in Company D of the 10th Michigan Volunteer Infantry, a company known as the Sanilac Pioneers. He enrolled in Lexington and, under the command of Captain Israel Huckins, the regiment mustered in at Flint. George's Promotions and Duties George's dedication and leadership qualities did not go unnoticed. He rose through the ranks, receiving a commission as a second lieutenant in April 1862 at Flint. His journey took him to Hamburg Landing on the Tennessee River, where his command played a vital role in ferrying troops and military supplies. Lieutenant Jenks was in charge of a steamboat, navigating the river and ensuring the smooth transportation of troops and supplies between Florence and Hamburg Landing. His appointment as commander on the river, bestowed upon him by General Payne, showcased his commitment to the cause. The regiment's journey continued to Nashville, Tennessee, where they faced a siege. During this time, George W. Jenks received another promotion, becoming a first lieutenant, thanks to Governor Blair's appointment. However, his dedication came at a cost, as he resigned in February 1863 due to illness. Jenks comes home to a new path. After returning home, George attempted to re-enlist a year later, but his application was rejected due to his physical condition. Undeterred, he accepted an appointment as Deputy Provost Marshal under William McConnell of Pontiac, serving in this role until the spring of 1864. Following his resignation, he took charge of his father's sawmill, located five miles north of Lexington. In the winter of 1864, George joined Pack Jenkson Company and relocated to Rock Falls, where he became the firm's general manager. He played a pivotal role in the company's success until January 1, 1876, when the firm dissolved. George received half of his father's business, including all lands of Carrington Packing Company and Pack Jenkson Company. George develops a thriving partnership. A new partnership emerged, known as J. Jenkson Company. This firm engaged in various ventures, including a general mercantile business and the production of flour and salt. Additionally, they conducted extensive real estate transactions, employing an average of 75 assistants across their operations. George's Public Service and Recognition George Walton Jenks's commitment extended beyond the business realm. 
He served as supervisor of Sand Beach Township for multiple terms and achieved electoral success as a presidential elector on the Republican ticket in 1884. His marriage to Arabella Knapp in 1867 resulted in two children, George J. and Annabelle. Jenks' involvement in the local community George was not only a successful businessman, but also a dedicated community member. He became a member of the Knights of Honor and the Royal Arcanum, organizations that aimed to provide support and assistance to their members. In times of crisis, George's sense of duty shone through. He was appointed distributing agent at Sand Beach to aid those affected by the devastating fires of 1871 and 1881, earning the respect and gratitude of his community. Final Thoughts About George Walton Jenks George W. Jenks's life was one of service, dedication, and enterprise. From his early years as a Civil War soldier to his prosperous business ventures and community involvement, he left an indelible mark on the Michigan Thumb region. His story is a testament to the resilience and determination that defined the people of his time. George W. Jenks remains an enduring figure in the history of Sand Beach, Michigan, and his legacy lives on. We invite you to learn more about George W. Jenks and the history of Sand Beach, Michigan. You can visit the following authoritative website for additional information. Look up thumbwind.com in the search engine of your choice. This concludes this week's story. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Thumbwind's End of the Road podcast. If you like this kind of tale, you are invited to subscribe to our podcast. Just search for The End of the Road in Michigan from wherever you're listening from. Please watch for and download next week's podcast and take a moment to give us a review. Have a great day.